Hi. So today I'm going to show you how I make um, this candle. So this is my, what I call my curvy female. Um, so I think, uh, yeah, in one of my previous videos, I showed you how to make this, which I call my thin female. And so today I'm going to make the curvy. I'm also going to make my succulent candles. So it's got a candle, um, a wax succulent on the top, and then it's got wax in the bottom. And so I call these my mini glass succulent candles. So I'm going to make four of these and one of the curvy ones. But I, yeah, I do also have my male, my male mold. I mean my male candle, but I won't make that one today. I have quite a lot in stock of him, but I do need a pink curvy female. So I'm going to make that today. So what I have with me to make this is uh, the mold. So this is a silicone mold I buy online. I brought this one from AliExpress from overseas. So I've used it a few times, so it's really good. I will also make another female, but I don't have one of her. I need her in stock, so I'm going to make those two females. And then I have my succulent mold. So I have quite a few of these. They're all different shapes. And then I do also have some leaf mold. So these ones, I believe, I got off Amazon. Um, but yeah, I mostly go to Amazon or... AliExpress, I think they're the main places I've gone for candle moulds. Um, yeah, so I'll have those. I do also have wick. I just have cotton wick for these candles. And then I have a kebab stick or a skewer to push the wick through the bottom of the mould. So I can get it in the bottom, out the top. I guess through the top, out the bottom. And... Then I have a pair of scissors, I have some pegs to hold the wick on the top like that. So I'll show you this when I do it. And then I have these glass, gla mini glass tea light candle things. They're about 95 milliliters. It holds about 95 milliliters of wick, so it's just a mini, mini glass. And then a wick, so I'll glue that in there. Um, so I have four of those and then I have some glue to glue those in and I have some green some green dye chips because I will want green for my succulent for the to get this wax to be green so I've got my green then I have measuring I won't really use this too much for these candles I use this for my tin candles um, so I can get exactly the right fragrance though. But for these, I just splash a bit of scent. It's not hugely scented, but they are scented. So I just kind of eyeball splash the scent. And so then obviously I have my scents. So I have six different scents here. Um, but I, I may not use them all. I might just use a couple. And then I have my wax. So this one will be, I guess I will do a white in the thin one. And then I'll add a bit of the pink dye and then make a pink curvy. And then I have this other one and um, there's already a bit of green so because I'll have the green one. So I have these two. I could alternatively get um, my other one of these and have one pink, one white, one green. But I just have two at the moment. I think that, yeah, I haven't got the other one out of my cupboard yet. So I think this is everything. Oh, I do also have a thermometer. But again, it's not hugely needed. With the wax I'm using, I need to get it to 80 degrees, which is a lot higher than other waxes. And once it hits that, then I kind of just pull whenever I feel. Normally it's straight away, so it's an 80, but I haven't found too many issues pouring at 70 or, or 75, but it's really up to you. Um, I guess it depends yeah, the time of the day as well. And so, yeah, I think that's everything. I use. I have this other pouring cup which sometimes I melt the waxes in these and then I pour it in here because it's got a 
um, a pointier spout. I don't know if you can see that. Compared to these ones, it's a bit, it's less narrow. This one's a lot narrower, so I can kind of accurately get it into here, but it doesn't really matter too much. So, yeah. so the first thing I'm going to do is go and melt these in the microwave. So I'll melt them for about four minutes and then check the temperature and then melt them again until it hits 80 and then I'll come back. So while the wax is melting, I normally get everything kind of sorted. Sorry, I am up here. I think you can see better of what I'm doing. So I'll normally get things glued and wick sorted. So I'll start by gluing these. I'd already glued the wicks in. So I just have these other two back here where I already have the wicks ready. And I will just super glue the wicks on. So I just do this manually. I don't have, I've seen some people that have kind of like a machine where they just kind of push down and it and it puts a wick on, but I just I don't think I make enough to need something like that. So I'll just glue these on. And then They'll sit there within a few minutes and then the wax, the wax will be ready to pour in. So I'll just leave those, so those two will be fine. And then I need wax for these two, the curvy and the other woman. These are my two female torso moulds. So I will take some of my cotton wax, kind of hold my wax from the ground, bent a little bit up to the top and then grab a little bit so it's just a little bit taller than the mold so I have a bit at the bottom and a little bit at the top to hold on to the wick with so that's good for that one and then I do the same with the other one so I think I have I think I have about six different six or, six, or five or six different torso molds um, so these are just two of mine so I have already just here I have three plus this one, so there's four. I think I have a couple more different male moulds. Um, so it's really easy to get addicted to making these. I do sell them um, at markets and stuff, and they are very popular. So it's quite easy for me to just keep making them, and they're super fun. So I will now... I had already... When I got the moulds, I would already used scissors to poke holes in so there's already existing holes because I've used these before so I will now I just heard the microwave go so the wax is melted so I will now use the skewer to push the wick through so I'm pushing that through take that out and then I'll go in from this end and grab the wick through so I will leave that much at the top this much is coming at the bottom so I probably cut too much from this mold but that's okay so now that one's through and then put this one through so in my wax that I use for for the torso molds or oh, not the scissors wrong thing this thing um so the the wax I use for the torsos and the succulents are a natural eco-friendly palm wax so they are suggested for pillar waxes but I do know lots of people use soy wax, but you have to be very careful on the kinds of soy wax you use because if you get a soy wax that's too creamy, it will just melt on your fingers. And you obviously don't want that when you're taking the mold, taking the candles out and such. And so, um, yeah, I think you'd have to experiment a bit, but try find some soy wax that is the strongest so if it suggests for pillars it just needs to be the strongest it doesn't need you don't want creamy soy wax um but if you can find a natural palm wax that's good as well just don't use paraffin wax because that's really bad for the environment whereas the soy and palm the natural versions um they are, they are the best they're really good and uh people really want want those ones they don't want the otherwise they could just go to the big chain stores and buy paraffin waxes but they're really bad for the environment 
so yeah sorry i'm just trying to get you can see a here and a little here and here but that should be fine i either got it out or it's just going to be somewhere in there so what i found i had a couple of questions on my last videos um about frosting so i did have frosting for a long time so if you want to scent these you have to just deal with frosting um i put a small amount of my scent in a very um like i would say five to ten milliliters for about 200 milliliters of wax so there's it, it's maybe five percent fragrance i put in these and i don't have too many too many issues with frosting anymore but when i did put more like 10 to 12 percent fragrance i had lots of frosting and it sometimes they wouldn't come out of frosting they would gain frosting over time so that's something you want to decide if you want or not um but yeah that that will happen uh, i have found by also putting the these molds in the microwave for about 45 seconds so i would do that for the succulent molds and the body mold so i'm going to go do that and i find that the frosting is really really reduced any kind of sinking and frosting um disappears i don't have that issue whereas if i just leave them quite cold then i get lots of sinking and i have to top up and top up whereas if i go heat them then they shouldn't they shouldn't need they shouldn't sink yeah so i'm gonna go heat the molds up and grab my melted wax and then come back Okay, so I have heated these molds up. So I would now, on the body molds, just add the peg that will hold the wick in place. So it can hold it in the center. This mold is a little tricky. I may have to put it around the other way. Um, so a lot of this is trial and error. I have made this body mold this body shape I guess um, a couple of times I've made this one a lot more so this one I think is pretty good and ready I might we don't want the wick to be touching the sides at all and this one is very close but it's extremely hard to tell I think that one should be okay I don't make that shape as much it's got less curves it's more sticking it sticking your chest out and her rib cage out and people don't really in New Zealand at least they don't really like that one they like the curvy one and the the thin curvy one and then the thicker curvy one so I think these two are ready for the wax um the succulent ones I also heated up one of mine I had to cut slits around to get the the candle out so I don't put holes or anything in them yet I do that after so I will I have my green wax here all melted so I will add a dash of the scent I'm forgetting all the names so a dash of the scent I will then mix it around a bit and pour it in so my, it's reasonably, I mean, that makes self, that makes sense, self-explanatory. I will also add a bit more green because people really like when it looks like a real succulent. So quite dark green. So I will just take my, my dye block and cut a bit. I mean, sorry, what's the word? Shave a bit of it off. Not very much because... I've only got a little amount of wax and this dye is reasonably opaque or reasonably pigmented so I shouldn't need too too much because otherwise I'll end up with a really really dark one which isn't a problem people really like when I have heaps of options and no two candles really the same they're slightly they're always slightly different different in scent or different in color people really like that because then they can buy a couple and mix and match to put them around their house so I would just mix it in I shouldn't need I don't need too much mixing there's really not a lot of you can kind of see the green a bit more I don't want to tip it out but not a lot for this one 
my most I don't know if I have enough I didn't really measure a lot and that's okay um, because yeah I'm not selling a huge amount so if I was selling these every day I needed to post them out every single day I'd need to be a lot more careful with getting quantities right um, so I'm not wasting time but I, I don't I mostly sell these at the markets over the weekends and so it's normally okay just make whatever works for me in the week and then um, whatever's whatever I've made is what I bring to the market so my most popular is this one and then this one so I'm going to fill that one first and then this one and hopefully I'll have enough um, wax to fill them all but we'll see so I just fill it all the way to the top try not to spill yep I'm going to do the next one I think this might be quite a light green so I could have added more color um, and then this one sweet and then I do have enough for the leaves I actually have a lot of extra so this is probably when this melts what's the word solidifies um, I can just remelt the wax and then put it into the mold again. I don't. It, it's reasonably straightforward. If I if I do, if I do too much, it's the best thing because then I already have melted wax. It's just hard melt wax, melted wax. Whereas non-melted wax takes a lot longer to melt. If that makes any sense. So I have a bunch extra. So I'll just put that aside. And when these are hardened, so when these one these ones will harden in about two two hours, I'd say maybe two or three hours, and then I pop them out, and then I remelt that within a minute. Do it again, just keep doing it, and then I have a bunch of succulents ready to put on top of the glasses. So I'll leave those there. I then have my clear one. So I will just have a check of the temperature but from feeling it I can feel it's fairly is very hot so it should be okay but I will just wait for the temperature to check and so I can see it's shooting up it hasn't hit 80 yet but it, it has to hit 80 with this particular wax if it doesn't hit 80 I'll have issues with my pour with pouring into the mold so if it hits 90 that's okay but as long as it gets to 80 then i'm okay and it's still going at this will this is definitely going to hit 80 so that's okay i think it's going to be about 85. so i wanted the thinner one thinner thinner woman to be the white one and then i will add some pink dye to get a pink curvy one pink is surprisingly to me my most popular color in the shapes in the in the in the body molds which i found really odd because i thought it would be white would be the most popular but pink is definitely the most popular um i should have put this in the thinner the narrow one but that's okay oh i didn't put any scent in it was close so i will again just like put a dash no real eye i just don't want to put too much so again that will take getting used to a lot of things you can't just start making candles and be an expert it will take some time I started making these shape ones about eight months ago and I think I'm doing reasonably okay with them now um, I started making my tin candle so just the standard candle about five years ago so I'm fairly familiar with wax um, and these succulent ones I've only been making for about six months so it's really taken time and I'm still adapting and changing things around that's okay so I think this is okay to pour so I will just pour it in the mold carefully I put it in a container um, for no real reason but I mean if I spill a bit it won't get on my on the table but that's not the end of the world so I have it in a 
you can't really see but it's sitting on a little container but you don't need to do that this one I'll just put straight onto the desk and if I get wax on it I can normally just wait for it to harden and then scrape it off it does the wax doesn't really cause any issues unless it's getting onto carpet or something you kind of have to scrub it off so I think yep that one's pretty much full um, so I'm wondering what the best way I wonder if I should put that I might put this wax into this pouring spout in case I need some of the white to top up um, so I may put some of that in here so if I need any of that white it will be set aside if something were needing topped up on that one but it shouldn't because I heated them up so I've just put I don't know if you can see but there's just a little bit of wax in there so I'll just melt this if I need to top anything on that one up so I can put that aside I don't need that and then I will take a little bit of my red dye I should have grabbed yeah I'll grab I did buy a new I bought a raspberry color so I will go grab that so I did grab I don't know if you can read that, but I did grab my raspberry, which is my pink colour. I could have added red and just been cautious on how much red. But I think it gives a slightly different colour. This um, gives quite like a nice fuchsia pink, which is very popular. So I will add that in. Not too much because I don't want a bright pink. But I did make pink for the last market and it sold out which was very surprising. Normally my brown molds or the white ones sell out a lot faster, but this time my pink did. So I will, I've added some pink. So as I stir that, you'll be able to see it goes slightly pink. It's not hugely pink, because I don't want people to have, you know, people don't often really want fuchsia pink <laughs> candles in their home some people may but most people in New Zealand don't I do need to add a bit more because it's very very light pink so this is where as you order uh, different dyes from different suppliers you'll be able to learn how pigmented all their candle dyes are and so it's <laughs> I keep saying that it's definitely trial and error we'll just add a little bit more and that should bring it to quite a nice fuchsia pink and the temperature of this should still be up enough that I will the um, candle will still come out okay hopefully with no frosting and with no holes cool so you can see in the camera it looks really pink it is not as pink as as it's looking but it is a very nice very nice pink so I will pour that into my curvy mold I'll do that up here checking that my wick is centered and I will just pour that in nice and carefully and you can see it filling up the pink going in And it's pretty much the perfect amount of wax, which my eye is really getting the hang of making candles. <laughs> I think I make quite a few of these every week. So I only have a slightly small amount of the wax left, you can see. And that's good, because if I need to top it up, I have a little bit left, but not, an, not a lot. So I just have extra pink wax hanging around, which I don't want. So that's perfect. I've done the succulents, the white and the pink. So feels a bit might feel a bit chaotic, but it's not. It is really fun. And so yeah, these are good. I will put this up here to the side, not to bump the table. Perfect. So I will now fill the bases of these with white wax. 
So I have four of these. So I need to, I know I said before I wasn't going to get my third glass one of these, but um, I do need it now that I think about it. And I do need it for to fill the bottom of these up. So once the top of the succulent, I guess once the actual succulent part is hardened, I need to put that on top of this, but I cannot put that on wet wax. This needs to be hard, that needs to be hard, and I need to put them together both after they're hard. So I'm gonna make the bottom the base of the succulent candles now and then everything will harden and I'll put them together so I will go grab I'll go melt the wax in my third glass measuring jug I'll melt um, a creamier soy wax for the base of these and I will be back once that's melted so now the I have the soy wax melted I will take the temperature check it for this creamy soy wax I need it about 70 degrees Celsius. I don't need to get it to the 80. So I will just have to have a check. I grabbed a another one of these because pouring it into the small glass container is fairly tricky with this glass one. So I have this, so I'll transfer that into here once I I can see that it's up to 70. Oh, yep, and I can see it is. It is quite a foggy wax today. I'm unsure why, but it is up to temperature, so that is okay. I did forget to mention I do need these wick holders, so I have I'll grab four of them. Four. So I use the wooden ones with some holes in. You can use, I mean, a pencil and a rubber band or something around the house. You don't have to get these, but I have these. I think I ordered some wax a long time ago from someone who had wax and didn't need it anymore. And they chucked these, a bunch of these in. So it was super useful, but I accidentally have them. Didn't intentionally buy them, but they have served great purpose. I can see that this pink one is hardening and the, the pink is coming out super pink which is great that's kind of that it is a bright pink but it's it is um like a pastel fuchsia i really like it so it's coming out really really nice and i can see this one is also hardening up which is good so the soy wax seems to have come up to temperature I will then pour that wax into this one. I will do that over something else though, in case it spills. So bear with me. And I will just pour all of it in. Mm, doesn't look like it's gonna spill today. It's just all gonna pour, perfect. So I have all of the creamy soy wax in here. If you're doing this all at once, like I am, you have to really take count of what's in what container. Because this one is the leftover from that. So I put that old one aside. And then I have this. I will add my scent. I'm going to use uh, like a lemonade scent. A lemonade like the lemonade drink. I'm going to add that. That's the scent. So I will just again eyeball it. I know I want this to be reasonably strong. So this is the same scent that I scented the succulents, the green wax. So the whole, they all smell the same. When someone burns that candle, it's all one scent. So I will just stir that for about a minute or maybe 30 seconds just until the scent has the scent molecules have bonded to all of the wax molecules so it's all completely binded so once the wax hardens then it will still have a good scent if they don't mix this long enough then the scent won't bind correctly and you'll get a separation within the candle that you can't 
visibly see with the eye, but the molecules will be separated, so you're not going to have um, you're not going to have a strong scent when it, the candle is cold, and you also won't have a strong scent when it's being burnt. So the candle is just kind of a dud. So you do want you do want a, a good scent when it's hot and cold. So I'll put. So that is pretty much combined. And now I just need to pour it. So I will now pour these into the full glass and then wait for everything to set. And then I'll come back when I start demolding. So after a few hours, um, I've I unmolded this and got the succulent out and then remelted some wax and I'm I've poured it again. And I did the same with this one. And got this one out and I'll just show you I have these and these these ones are from previous you know last week I made these these ones I've gone I did quite a few of these throughout the night while everything's been setting and I have all these these will all go on the top of these right so but I'm just melting some wax to put on the top of this so then I can bind this white, the creamy wax with the succulent so I can bind them together. So I'm just melting that in the microwave now. So I'll put those aside. But in the meantime, I should be okay to unmold these two, the, the shaped candles. Um, I did, sorry, I did also use um, a pair of really pointy scissors and I, in the bottom there, I just put the scissors in and then twisted it like a drill to drill a hole all the way through the centre. So I do that with scissors and then that should slip through that hole and it will just sit on the top like this. So I just need to get some melted wax to bind the top and the succulent. But I will demold these. Hopefully these come out okay. There is a chance that I did something wrong. It was fairly cold today, so temperature can be can control quite a lot of things. So hopefully it doesn't affect too much. But I will I can feel that they are quite cold so they should be okay to demold it's been quite a few hours <clears throat> normally I wait at least three hours before I start unmolding and I just start rolling it back you can see I'm just rolling so you can see it's half out there we go and from viewing it, it looks like it's pretty good I can see a little bit of, I think that's the wick, which was my fault. But other than that, it looks like it's come out pretty good. So this is the, the bit I was talking about, is I think there's the wick right there. But that, I mean, that's just a minor issue. So I think that one's quite good. It's fairly different to this, these shapes. I probably won't stand because I haven't trimmed the bottom. So I just made this one. So that looks perfect. And I will demold the pink one. This one I have had some issues with on cold days um, in certain areas so I am not too sure how well this will come out and I can see it looks like I've already potentially got an issue with it but normally it's okay if there are things wrong with it that you really don't like you can just melt it down and redo it which is 
great. That's the great part about candles. You just melt, melt it and repour. Yeah, this one. I think it will be okay, but it's definitely not perfect. It has some flaws, and because it's quite coloured, you can see the flaws more than if it was just white. <clears throat> but it's okay. Most people won't mind and will still buy her, so I can bring her to this weekend's market, and if she doesn't sell in a couple of markets, I'd just melt it and redo it on a warmer day or a different time of the day. So I'll show you what I mean. So I don't know if you can see the little bit of frosting down here. Is it focusing? So there's a little bit. Um, a little bit along the side here but overall it's not too bad and pretty well done so I think that's pretty much okay <clears throat> I think I'll leave it for now and see if it sells if it doesn't then I can melt it and fix it so I'll put her next to her friend and so I will just go and grab the tops for this and finish these off. So now I have my melted wax. I just have a little bit so I can pour it just on the tops of these and then I will place uh, one of the succulents on. So I'll start with this one. So I will just pour a small amount on to cover the top. I'll spread it out so it's covered any, everywhere on the top and then quickly before it sets push the succulent down onto the top and once done do the same with this one I will do the other green one so I'll put a little bit on the top Push it around quickly, grab the succulent and push it down. Now that one's on. <coughs> I'll do the same, but this time I'm going to put some of these leaves down. So this one's a bit tricky, I need to be careful and speedy. So, I have to be quite quick with this one. So, I already pre decided the pattern before I started melting wax, which helps a lot with timing. Okay, placement isn't perfect, but it still looks good. I don't know if you can see. of Hawaiian-ish. Still and it smells great. And then this one, I will use the rest of my wax. Yep, that's already. <clears throat> so that one is kind of like a double cactus top, but it's still setting, so I need to be careful. That's the cactus one, so I'll just cut the tops off and then I'll I can show you the final product. Yeah, I will show you 
from above. So in the video, we made this pink one, these four, and this one. These two and these four. So I hope you liked this video and learned something that you may not have known before. Hopefully you can start attempting to make any of these candles. Um, people really love them and they're a lot of fun. So uh, comment below if there's anything you're interested in knowing or let me know if you've tried anything yourself and how it went. And yeah, I'm keen to hear what everyone thinks. Cool, thanks.